Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to the com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news which has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. This video, of course, is going to be focusing upon the CES event from AMD. The company, as expected, were not disappointing and announced a myriad of products, including a couple of major surprises. That's right, 7NM Vega, anyone? Also, we hear specific release dates and announcements concerning the second generation Threadripper and, of course, 12NM Ryzen. So, without further ado, let's just get started. So, let's start things out with Vega. Originally, the rumors were that the 14NM Vega would instead be replaced with a 12NM, but AMD have decided to go all out. And what we're looking at instead is a 7NM Vega, which to be honest with you, surprised pretty much everyone in the tech industry, myself included. Now, AMD are really touting this for machine learning, which was one of the earlier rumors as well, so at least that is remaining consistent. But another point about this is this means that Navi is going to be released about a year later, and then Navi's successor is going to be hitting the store shelves around the year 2020. So the 7NM variant of Vega is obviously going to be considerably more power efficient, and then Vega um, will then obviously be succeeded with Navi. We know considerably less about Navi, and we, so AMD certainly haven't enlightened us further since the original rumors. We know that it's like using GDDR6, possibly HBM3, and has said to be scalable, whatever that means. The key takeaway here is AMD are doubling down on Vega, and are sacrificing a new GPU in 2018 based on a different architecture. Instead, they want to refine and ready the 7NM node, which will later be used for Navi, which it looks like is not going to be released until either the first, possibly even the second half of next year, 2019, depending when we finally see the 7NM variant of Vega on store shelves. And once again, to reiterate, the 7NM product of Vega is going to be designed specifically for machine learning applications. So it's ambiguous whether we're going to see a gaming variant, although let's be honest, I wouldn't be surprised. The company are also pushing AMD's MI Open libraries, which support common learning frameworks, for example, CAFE and TensorFlow. And because this is an open heterogeneous software environment, in theory at least, it should encourage um, developers to program and use AMD GPUs for high-performance compute and also deep learning. So now let's talk about the processor announcements. Now the big thing here is not only is the 1000 series uh, getting significant price cuts, but we're going to see the introduction of the 2000 series over the next couple of months, and then we'll finally see a thread repeating in the second half of 2018. 18. So we're going to start things out with a couple of example price cuts. Um, by no means is this a complete list, but for example, the Ryzen 7 1800X is going to go from 499 US dollars to 349 US dollars. The 1700X is going to go from 399 uh, US dollars down to 309. Obviously, this is based on the old MSRP. And if we go with another popular model, which is, of course, the Ryzen 5 1600X is going to go from 249 down to 219. So, yes, not a significant saving, but that means you can get 6 cores, 12 threads with the Ryzen 5 1600 for now only 189 US dollars, which is a bloody good bargain. Clearly, AMD are looking to clear inventory before the introduction of the 2000 series. Speaking of which, what type of performance and specifications are we looking at? Well, the uh, 12NM processors are going to be hitting store shelves in April, along with the 400 series platforms. AMD have confirmed a couple of things. Firstly, there will be higher clock speeds with the 12NM, and obviously we'll also see a power reduction as well, which is obviously really good news. So release date of April was also very good news for anyone who is looking to purchase a Ryzen 2000 processor. As we'll see the simultaneous release of Ryzen 7, 5 and 3 series chips, AMD have also confirmed one other very important detail, that the Zen Plus cores will indeed be Ryzen 2000 and Ryzen 3000 will be based on Zen 2. And for those wondering when Zen 2 is actually going to appear on store shelves, well, that's going to be at some point in 2019, so you've got some weight. AMD also are going to be updating the processors with Precision Boost 2.0 technology. 
It has first seen an appearance with Ryzen processors with Radeon graphics and is very similar to Precision Boost 1, but with one major difference. Precision Boost 2 does not imp impose a lower clock speed limit if more than two CPU cores are being used. Precision Boost 2.0 only will assess whether the processor is within the specification and will continue to boost on any number of cores until the maximum clock speed printed on the box or they bump into another issue. In theory at least, this should allow the Ryzen 2000 processors to have a higher clock speed and maintain it even if there are more threads being used, and thus boost more aggressively. You'll also spot one other key bullet point in one of the slides, and that is silicon improvements for cache and memory speeds, as well as latency. This is pretty much a confirmation that the Ryzen 2000 series will A, support higher memory clock speeds and most likely be more stable with them, which is definitely a good thing. After all, we've all seen how well Ryzen scales with either tighter memory timings or faster RAM, but also the onboard cache of the processors is likely going to be faster with, le with lower latency. AMD are touting the figure of a 10% performance increase versus 14 LPP, but don't forget that's 12 versus 14, and thus it doesn't bring into mind any of the other tweaks that they've made. Thus, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the 10 to 12% clock speed bump that we've discussed many times before, but there might be another one, perhaps even up to 10%, depending just how much more aggressive the onboard cache is, the improvements to boosting, and of course the speed that uh, Ryzen 2000 allows memory to run it. That's pretty profound. That there'll be a second generation Threadripper released this year has indeed been confirmed. According to the company's own official roadmaps, we'll be seeing the introduction of the second generation of Threadripper hit in the second half of this year. So unless you're really desperate for those 16 cores, 32 threads, it may well serve you better to just wait for several months and then kind of go from there. How many cores will the high-end SKUs allow? As I mentioned, we have 16 uh, cores, 32 threads for the 1950X. So is it possible that they could indeed increase that number for the next generation Threadripper? It's pretty much a confirmation, of course, that the next generation Threadripper, which I'm assuming is going to be known as 2950X, for example, will feature higher clock speeds and, once again, improved uh, caches and all the other bits and pieces, but will it feature more processor cores? Making things pretty simple for the purpose of this video, after all, I don't want to do a full technical analysis, you could essentially say that Threadripper processors are just repurposed epic parts an Epic, as you probably are aware, can go up to 32 cores, and that's certainly not a confirmation. After all, Epic is designed to gobble up a lot more power. But if there are enough tweaks and they have changed the motherboard design enough, perhaps it is possible that the second generation of Ryzen Threadripper could go a step further and possibly have 20 cores, 24 cores. The only thing I have against that is pretty obvious, for the professional market, that would mean that Threadripper would be very close to competing with Epic, unless AMD decide to go even further with Epic, but obviously you've also got their multi-socket Epic parts as well, so it's a little bit up in the air. Maybe AMD will do this, because after all, the X299, you've got the 7980XE from Intel, which does have 18 cores, so for a moment, AMD were touting the fact that they had the highest uh, available um, number of cores for the prosumer, but Intel have once again regained that, so maybe AMD will go down that route. After all, with faster memory speed supported as well, memory bandwidth shouldn't be so much of a big deal. It doesn't matter if you've got like 128 cores, just for the sake of argument, and 256 threads. If I said to you, well, okay, then your memory speeds are going to be 200 megahertz, that's not going to mean much, right? And obviously it's a silly example, but it is very telling. The fact that they are 
supporting faster memory speeds will inherently mean that more processor cores won't need to wait so long and that combined with better caching systems maybe they will go with more, more processor cores but it's certainly not a rumor at the moment so this is not confirmation that we're going to see 32 processor cores and 64 threads on the next generation thread ripper i've decided to also include this uh, piece of news despite the fact that it's not as important because confirmation has indeed of course a leaked from intel side of things but we have confirmation from amd as well as some images and other pr pieces of the mobile vegas unfortunately specifications weren't provided by amd but once again because intel have leaked this stuff we kind of know roughly what we're going to be looking at with the GPU putting out around 3.5 teflops for the higher end SKU and 4 gigabytes of HPM2 memory on a 1024-bit memory interface. Also, as a small bonus, we have the first official images of an X470 motherboard from a gigabyte. I'm going to read out the specifications from my smartphone so I don't screw up, although it is important to note that um, gigabyte have not officially confirmed this variant thus far. However, it looks like it's got the same RGB lighting from the gaming series and it has a, and the gaming seven Wi-Fi is equipped with an onboard dual band AC. It has three full length PCIe slots, two PCIe 1.0 slots, two M2 slots, and also improved VRM cooling and improved uh, VRM heat sinks as well. So theoretically, we should see much improved uh, overclocking potential. And on the rear IO, we have four uh, USB 3.0, two high power USB 3.0s, two USB 3.1s. One of those, by the way, is a type C and two is USB 2.0. And there will also, of course, be a couple of buttons which will allow you to do the normal stuff like, uh, say, turn your system on and off from the motherboard itself, reset the CMOS and that type of stuff, which is absolutely phenomenal for power users or people who are kind of tweaking their motherboard uh, or system outside of the traditional case. By the way, that's really handy for benchmarking, so good on Gigabyte and any other manufacturers who tend to do that. A smaller piece of news, because it's been covered a couple of times before by us, but I'll quickly go over it. After all, these leaks are pretty much synonymous at this point with any news of AMD, but the Ryzen 5 2400G is going to be sold at 169 US dollars. The 2200G is going to cost 99 US dollars. And this, of course, is the culminated work between Zen and Vega and it's going to sit on a single die. Rather unsurprisingly, it's still a four core, eight thread part for both the 2200 and the 2400, but the 2200 has a slightly more anemic boost clock. It's going to run at 3.7 gigahertz compared to 3.9, and also the base clock is 100 megahertz slower. Both, however, will support six megabytes RAM DDR4 support of 3200 megahertz, which is pretty damn good and might be uh, a good indicator of the types of speeds that the Ryzen 2000 series could uh, support as a whole. The graphics core uh, with the 2400G, 704 shaders, uh, 1250 megahertz compared to 512 versus 1100. So obviously, if you're paying that extra $70, you are going to be getting significantly more graphics performance and slightly improved CPU performance. AMD have also decided to grace us with a few benchmarks, certainly not a great deal of benchmarks, and obviously they are choosing applications which I'm assuming benefit them best, and so the normal thing, I would highly suggest you wait for independent reviews, but if you were to take a look at the 2200G, it has 52 frames a second in Battlefield 1 versus, well, around the 25 frames per second mark on the uh, 8100 from Intel, that's an i3, and similarly you can see Skyrim absolutely gets decimated, Dota 2 on Vulcan, it looks around the, let's say, 55, 60 frames per second mark on the i3 8100, 74 frames a second on the Ryzen 3 2200, I don't like the fact that Intel, I'm um, sorry, Intel's performance numbers were not uh, the actual frames per second were not shown by AMD. That's kind of, I don't like that at all, but that's just my opinion. And finally, we have another um, sort of benchmarks, and these show the performance against a variety of different SKUs from AMD. So you have the Ryzen 5 2400G all the way down to the Ryzen 3 1200. And you can see that depending obviously upon the application, you're looking at about 110 uh, percent, uh, sorry, a 10% improvement for the Cinebench 1 thread, all the way up to 
about 160 percent on TrueCrypt 7.1a. So that's a pretty damn impressive for the more uh, synthetic slash creative benchmarks. So I guess the question is, what do I personally think of AMD's announcements? Well, a lot of the stuff, for example, the Ryzen 2000 series, as well as the price cuts to the Ryzen 1000 series, not exactly surprising after all if it hadn't have been announced particularly the price cuts after all once again clearing old inventory it just makes a lot of sense and it wouldn't have made uh, it would have just been absolutely bizarre if they hadn't announced that stuff however the one that absolutely just blew me away is the 7nm vega i was like really 7nm i actually mis i actually read a couple of uh, different variants of the article and then actually double checked the slides just to make sure that there wasn't like a typo just for a second honestly i was thinking really 7nm but no obviously they feel extremely confident in the 7nm process and it would when you think about it solve a lot of the issues of vega the problem with vega and this is slightly going off topic but the problem with vega is it was very very power hungry obviously the reduction of process means in theory at least we should see a reduction in power consumption, higher clock speeds, possibly more stable clock speeds. And obviously for professional usage, compute usage, H HPC, machine learning, and so on, those type of things are extremely important. I also 100% expected the Threadripper second generation. It would have made no sense for them not to have done that. Threadripper has turned out to be extremely lucrative for the company. After all, one can argue that it is a better value proposition than um, the X299 platform. Sure, the 7900X, which we have reviewed along with the X299 platform, is a fantastic processor, and I do still stand by our original review. But Fedropa is just a better purchase for the average user, especially if extreme multitasking is on the cards, and once again, you're going to be running a lot of processor cores. So I guess, in other words, if parallel performance at around the 1000 US dollars is more important than single uh, thread performance then without a question Threadripper is the better way to go. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. With all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.